2020 has been one hell of a year. It's nearly over. About a week to go. In 2019, I had been living in Melbourne, working, renting a room in Northcote. I was doing a lot of meditation, a lot of writing. I was trying to work exercise and movement into my life. Um, that was the hardest part. I was really struggling to find something that was sustainable. I kind of let all of my routines just completely swip, slip by the wayside. I just dropped my meditation. I kept on writing, but I dropped my exercise as well. And I just started partying like every weekend in Melbourne and just going wild, letting loose after so much time having this uh, really, really intense meditation schedule where I'd have to sit and meditate for a whole hour every morning and every night. And it completely destroyed my social life because like with that, with that um, schedule, there's no way I could go out and have fun at night because then I'd have to meditate like I'd have to meditate like in a really difficult way. And then in the morning if I was hungover, wow. You have no idea how hard it is to meditate when you're hungover. It's really, really hard and very painful. Anyway, I let go of my meditation and I started partying after a long time of not partying at all. At some parties I found some people going up to a festival in Queensland, 2,000 kilometers away. And I was just like, what am I really doing here down in Melbourne that is so important that I can't just leave? I had only just paid rent for the month and I couldn't find anybody to take my room or sublet or anything. Um, but I just, I just left anyway. <laughs> just let go. I hitchhiked up the coast and it was the most incredible time. And I got to this festival and I was working as part of the build crew. There were 400 people on site all volunteering to set the festival up. We were sleeping in our little teams, camping and eating three meals a day in this huge cafeteria called The Duck and working really hard, like six or seven days a week. Like just having that different kind of routine and structure in my life was the, the best possible thing. And after two and a half weeks of that, the festival was pretty much all ready and finally it was time for Christmas. The team that I was working with, we were building the bamboo structures at the festival, organized a big Christmas meal for us to all share together and I decided to draw a little pineapple in honor of the Pineapple Lounge, which was the bar that, among other things, we had built from bamboo for the festival. I had these 35 odd little, little squares with pineapples on them, uh, on nice paper. And I had the idea like, I really want them to be long lasting. I want to laminate them just so that all my friends have something that they can really hold on to. They won't get all dirty and destroyed and bent or torn up or, you know, lost or whatever. My 
objective for the day was to go to the Sinology department where they made the signs for the festival, get them to laminate my pineapples, and then go to the pineapple lounge for Christmas lunch. This is me we're talking about. So, I um, made things a little bit harder for myself. What I did was, walking out of my camp, I put a blindfold on. I just started walking completely blind in the direction of where I thought Sinology department was. I managed to walk down the hill to reach the fence which I knew would eventually meet up with the gate which would head down to where the Sinology department was and soon enough somebody turned up um, who was heading down to the main festival site so I hitchhiked with them down to the bottom of the path and then they went off in one direction and I went off in the other. Now the, tr the thing was I'd actually never been to the Sinology department. I had a vague idea of where it was in my head. Um, but I'd actually never been there and it was on the other side of this huge stage. So I walked off in the direction that I thought it was and I got lost for quite a long time. I was just stumbling around until somebody found me and I was like, hey, I'm trying to get to Sinology and they're like, oh yeah, you're kind of close. And then they just kind of led me a few minutes walk to where the Sinology department was and there was nobody there. So I sat outside and about 20 minutes later some people turned up. They'd been at lunch and they came back and you know, uh, they, I was like, hey, I'm just trying to get these laminated. They were like, yeah, that sounds great. No worries. And they laminated them for me. <laughs> and I stepped out of the department and I started walking in the direction of the pineapple lounge. <laughs> I just got completely lost. Then I heard a little truck pull up and somebody's like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm just um, heading toward the pineapple lounge. And he was like, yeah, but what are you doing, mate? What are you doing with that blindfold on? And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just blindfolded. This is just uh, what I'm doing with my day. But I'm trying to get to the pineapple lounge, please. And he was like, well, I'm actually the site manager for the entire Woodford Folk Festival and uh, this is actually a construction site right now we've got forklifts driving around and uh, this is very unsafe and I absolutely I, I, I order you to take your blindfold off right now well the, 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 the thing is um, when I get an idea into my head, when I, when I get a challenge into my head like this, um, there's just no stopping me. There's absolutely no stopping me. So um, I was just like, I just didn't say anything. And I was like, I'm just trying to get to the pineapple lunch, sir. He was like, look, if you don't take that blindfold off right now, I'm going to cut those wristbands off your wrist and you'll have to leave the festival. I thought for a second about that, I was like, alright. So I took my blindfold off and I sat down and I kept my eyes closed. Uh, he was not prepared for me to make this move and he was completely flummoxed. He was completely powerless. There was absolutely nothing that he could do. <laughs> he could not force me to open my eyes. 
he left a couple of minutes later some uh, some of the people who were working on a nearby crew site turned up with a buggy and they said ah, what are you doing and I was like oh, I'm trying to get to the pineapple lounge and they were like all right jump on and I jumped on the back of the bu buggy with my uh, blindfold back on in a couple of minutes I was safely at the pineapple lounge where I met with the 30 or 40 odd members of my team and I was uh, just in time because as soon as I arrived a massive rainstorm came and it started pouring down with rain so I have managed to uh, arrive at my destination just in time I had the most uh, beautiful lunch um, some highlights included uh, my team leader's gorgeous wife um, taking me by the arm and uh, serving me a plate and my friend Kelly helping me to lay out all of my neatly laminated pineapples for people to pick because each one was unique and different then, then um, an Aboriginal elder came and offered a blessing to us he uh, sang a beautiful song for us a beautiful traditional song and that was an ex actually an incredibly powerful moment for, for me I felt it I felt it deeply in my chest because when I arrived in Australia at the beginning of 2019 and I went through customs flashed my New Zealand passport the gates opened and I walked right into Australia I felt incredibly alienated I thought to myself where am I really welcome to this land yes these people in suits customs officials have have deemed me worthy to enter Australia but I'm, but but does the does the spirit of this land the ancestors who have lived on this land for 50,000 years are they okay with me being there are we in harmony me and them and there was absolutely nothing no there was no welcome there was no token of respect paid to the traditional owners of the land when I arrived in Australia 10 months before and on that day blindfolded at Christmas lunch at a festival I finally felt like I was welcome in Australia which gave me a sense of deep peace in my heart one year later it's Christmas Day and I am walking on the land here in the wild surrounded by the trees and the birds and the leaves and the rocks and I don't need an elder to sing a song for me and welcome me here because out here in the wild I feel that this is my place I feel that this is my home I feel deeply welcome here with the trees and the rocks 
and the beautiful open sky and the fresh air. I feel connected to the land through my bare feet. Even though I'm alone, I feel the spirits of my ancestors walking with me. And I feel that I'm in the right place at the right time. So today is my present to myself and this video is my present to you and I want to wish you Aro Hanui, Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays and I would like to offer you my deepest respect to you and your family and wish you the best. Lots of love, Aro Hanui. <laughs>